Hello everyone. Thanks again for joining us today for our latest HashiCorp snapshot. Um, so today um, our snapshot is entitled Integrating HashiCorp Nomad with Vault, which will be presented by a senior solutions engineer, Anthony Burke. So today Burke is going to demonstrate the methods HashiCorp Nomad um, uses to securely ac ac um, access HashiCorp Vault to retrieve runtime credentials and other secrets. Uh, before we get started and I pass you over to Berkey, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, just to note that this session is being recorded and um, I'll send out an email within the next day or two with a link to that recording. Um, secondly, if you do have any questions throughout the demo, please submit them via the Q&A tab. And we've got Cameron Heisman's, um, our staff solutions engineer on hand to answer any questions. And if we have time, we'll open it up at the end for questions as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Over to you, Berkey. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. Everyone, I'm just going to share my screen now. All right, so let's get started. So I'm Berkey, and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, running Bolt with HashiCorp Nomad. So before we get started, let's have a bit of story time. So in a previous life, I managed and ran an environment that had numerous types of applications, workloads that varied from containers to serverless functions to virtual machines and bare metal. And one of the things that happens when you play around with these environments in small dev environments is that things are forgotten, things like secrets, things like maintaining who has access to what, if it's a username, if it's a certificate, and it's somewhat manageable in a playground. And as it moves to production, things become the wild west as an operator or an SRE or whatever title you want to give yourself, is that managing things in a repeatable process is okay. Managing things in an environment where you give access to someone else as someone who maintains the environment is tricky. How do you put guardrails around people? How do you control what they're doing without restricting the value that they provide or the things they do? And it became very, very tricky. And the picture here is of an illithid or what's known as a mind flayer in the Dungeons and Dragons world. And that's what it feels like when you're managing an environment where you don't have full control or have consistency in the way you handle certificates, how you rotate secrets, how you build credentials and, and life cycle those security patterns. And I felt like my brains were being sucked out of my head like the guy on the picture here does in, in the in fantasy world of Dungeons and Dragons. And so what I want to impart today is methods and approaches that help when you use things like HashiCorp Vault with uh, platforms like Nomad, how we can streamline secret life cycling and have consistency in the approach for production, be it a small environment or a super large, you know, tens of thousands of uh, workloads and run times. All right. So I'm Berkey, um, but enough about me. You'll hear me drone on for the next 20 minutes. So you can find out more about me later. So the agenda today and what I want to cover off are a couple of things. And you'll walk away from knowing in this session a bit about access controls in Nomad, the policies that allow you to do things, the, the required minimum level of effort for setup for Vault, and then watch how two outcomes of this. Watch how we can have consistency in how we issue what we call Nomad ACL tokens and grant access to schedule jobs to the platform. And then also runtime secrets, the ability to render a secret for the application that gets scheduled. So this could be, in this case, this example, it's gonna be a database requesting a string from uh, a dynamic credential from Vault, but this could be a PKI certificate. This could be uh, credentials for build processes or, or keys to Docker registries, those sort of things. All right, so let's go through a bit of terminology first to help frame it. We'll get into some pretty pictures and I'll do some demos. So what are Nomad access controls lists and policies? Well, ACLs or tokens are the input engine into Nomad. Nomad is the uh, platform that will schedule your runtime, be it Java, be it container, be it .NET, and provide a consistent operating platform. Now, to schedule onto that platform, you need permission. I need to validate who you are and what you are. Well, Nomad's ACL system does this. And around an ACL token, there's wrapped policies, which are akin to roles. The policy states how that token is allowed to be used by Nomad. Can it read? Can it write? Can it update? Can it schedule? Can it read allocations? Can it define storage? Those sort of permissions are what are granted to the job submitter, or the, you know, and that's what the ACL does. So these two concepts play part and parcel. The ACL token 
to say, you know, I have a valid pass and the policy saying what this pass entitles me to, right? So in the case of here, I'm Berkey, I'm an administrator, I'm going to have a, a sufficient amount of privilege compared to say Cam, who can only submit allocations or jobs to the platform. And so that build out that traditional role-based access control. So what is a, a nomad policy? Here is an example of a nomad policy, right? We can assign a nomad policy to a collection of workloads inside a namespace or ever, all the objects under that hierarchy. And that policy in this case is read. Now we have a couple of things here, which I'll break down over the continuation of the next two slides. And that policy of read allows me to do a number of things inherent around read. So there's a number of um, uh, actions like read allocation, read file system, read, 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 or prefix by that read word. In addition, the subset of capabilities can be added to. So I can say in this case here, I want Berkey to be able to read everything, but I want him to also submit jobs, dispatch and read logs, which are generally in a higher level of control. Now, what does that mean here? You have your verbs and capabilities. So read, deny, write, scale. On the right hand you side, you see the actual actions included. So I can say, you know, Berkey can read, uh, Pete can write, Shirin can scale right, or shrink and write and scale. And that's going to include the relevant capabilities on the right-hand side. Now, I'm not going to read through all of these, but the, you get the idea is that you can mix and match. And then you might say, I'm going to grant someone a specific capability as well because their role dictates it or the machine like or pipeline tool or whatever's interacting with Nomad requires the ability to potentially scale a job. It could be a, a Prometheus watching something and it has a hook back into Nomad, right, and needs to scale jobs. And you can add that to that token to give that level of granularity that you desire. So that covers off sort of the access control list and the policies. And you can see here when you apply this, the requester being a human or a machine can based on their access to Nomad can access and request a token and then, or a token access list, control list token, and then get their policy, which is a part of that, and then do the deployments. If it's into a namespace, if it's into the default environment, they are enabled to do so, which is super. So that's all well and good, but at this stage right now, I have to go to Nomad. I have to go Nomad ACL token generate and generate myself a token. Now, I don't mind going Nomad ACL token create, defining the policy and away I go, but Nomad generates tokens, but it has no concept of identity, has no concept of awareness of what your enterprise or business has. You know, I don't need you to raise your hands, but you raise your hands if you use Active Directory. If you use you know, some sort of identity broker like Okta, something like that, that requires your identity being stored in another system elsewhere for the business. Now, everyone's raising their hands because LDAP or its 7,000 variants are being used, right? And so you have an identity system already. You need to broker that access. You need to control access. Now, Nomad's not aware of this stuff, but Vault is. Vault is very well aware of identity. Vault can do things based on who you are and how you authenticate. You probably can see where I'm going with this is why is a really cool integration here. So what's Nomad's integration of Vault? It's twofold. One, it's the scheduler. It allows you to define access to Nomad based on who you are and how you authenticate to Vault. I log in as Berkey, I can generate a certain token. ACL token workflows now become consistent. Instead of saying, oh, I need to generate some vault tokens for some certificates. I need to go over here and generate some uh, a Nomad token and put it all together. I can have one streamlined workflow where I access all of my security workflows, be it human or machine-based via vault. Right? I don't have to worry about where I have to go to get all my little ACL tokens. In addition, the job template rendering can occur where I submit a job into uh, Nomad, which we'll do in the demo. And instead of having to um, statically your bad practice, but static uh, configure tokens or use environment variables or inject via a pipeline or figure out some way of doing this, I can have Nomad render and access vault for secrets on demand. So my code will say, go to this path. And in the job file, it's totally sanitized. When I submit to Nomad, Nomad goes, cool. There's a job for me to go to vault, get the secret and use it. So it's a super way of streamlining that approach and providing consistency. So be it one workload, 10 workloads, a thousand workloads, you have consistency in your security approach. And if you remember back to the mind flower on the slide, the first slide, 
second side is that your mind as an admin is not being boggled down by who's got what and how and keeping you up at night. So the Vault integration will is twofold. You configure Vault with the relevant configuration to say here's where Nomad resides, here's a token, um, and here's the policies. Nomad, you'll configure the server to point to Vault. You'll configure a act token and the role you'll be generated from. And you'll configure your clients to say, this is where the Vault server resides. So it's very little configuration. And I'll, you know, the code that supports this presentation will be all available online. So you will see it. But where I straightforward is a bit of reading. Let's say it will be generous, a couple of hours of reading and about half an hour, 40 minutes of playing and getting it running. And you've got a working environment, right? So the Vault side, this is a stanza that sits inside the Nomad HCL configuration for the server side configuration. I enable Vault. I set an address, I create, I define a master role, I generate all my tokens from, and I set a token, right? Here I've hard coded it just for ex explanation purposes. Most often you use this Linux sig up command to, to pass a signal to inject the environment variable to then rotate the Nomad service. So looking at it here, how does it work? So on the left-hand side, I have my, uh, my vault policy, which says this is the path, database credentials, access database. And I'm going to generate a token for that. And so something actually generates a token for this database uh, role on a nomad cluster. It's going to have access to certain policies. And those policies, oops, sorry, um, will be access tables. So I generate a token. I can say I can access tables. That access tables policy allows me to get access to the database, right? So it gives me a set of credentials. Looking here, I can see here, I've got my vault read nomad creds role name. And that's going to spit out a credential for nomad. I'm doing this manually here to show that this point here. I can see here, I have an accessor ID. And if I read that role, I should have access to policies one and two, which is great. So that means when I generate a nomad token and I reconcile this on the nomad side, something I've generated in vault in a centralized manner has now been imparted onto nomad. And when nomad receives a job with that specific token, I'll be able to deploy to Nomad, and I'll inherit policies one and two. And policy one and two could be uh, read, write, submit, that those roles that I labored through and explained before, having certain um, permissions under the verbs and capabilities. And you can see that policy one and two, they match. Now, how that works visually, we'll go through this in a sec. You can see here that I can request access and based on who I am in Vault, I can authenticate to Vault, right? I can then speak to, the um, based authentication, I will probe Vault for a Nomad token. And what will occur here is it will just sort of pass that token back to me on the machine that requests it. It will go and program Nomad and say, here's an ACL that I've derived for you. Uh, Berkey logged in. He proved himself it was Berkey with his Active Directory authentication. He probed Nomad, uh, the secret engine for a token. Here's a token. This is legit, right? Instead of going to Nomad and just bumbling around, this gets programmed automatically, which is just, very, very slick. And from there, Berkey, the requester, is going to submit a job. Now, that token I'm used in my runtime, or if it be I put it into a pipeline tool, or if I put it into my environment and just a nomad job run, I can see here that I have my, my token. That's fantastic. So I go and submit that and submit it to Nomad. Nomad's going to spin that job. It interprets a job file. It reads the manifest. Now, that manifest has a whole heap of configuration inside it saying, you know, I want to run a container. It wants to be this server. It's going to connect to a database. And the Vault stanza is going to be rendered for me, which is lovely. And I can see when I deploy that, it will get to jump to Nomad and gets run. So what does that look like from an application side? The application side here shows me that this is going to be rendered on demand. Once Nomad sees this, it goes, okay, template, I need to go off and speak to Vault. Now, Nomad being configured to talk to Vault on my behalf, goes off and looks up Vault and looks up the database creds access database. Remember before and a couple of slides previously, I went and generated some credentials myself. Well, it's going to do this for me. And it's going to take the response from data and place the username in the username field and then the password in the password field and put that out to a JSON file. I'll have my my data, my web server front end reading from that file to generate its credential string to talk, talk to the database, right? So here I have something on runtime. I've got, it's a sanitized config, right? I submit it and then it goes and gets credentials on demand. If I have one container, five containers, 10 containers, they're going to get unique credentials, which means from an attack surface point of view, it's minimal because it's moving and rotating as those containers destroy, move around, they regenerate their token. 
from a consistency and admin point of view, I'm not worrying about having to go off and configure these or, hey, do you have the right password? Or today's the day we change our password, right? All of that goes away and this just happens, which is super. And then we have, uh, it gets scheduled and gets rendered and you can see here, it will talk to the SQL engine. Yeah, I've spoken over my, my slide and excitement there. All right, so let's, you can see that there, it's gonna program the database and away we go. And you can see if you cut that out, and I will show this in the demo, you're going to get a generated config. So if you look previously, that's the stanza on the screen here. You can see that's the, the format. You can see the output is a dynamic credential from Felt. Super way of streamlining this and makes it nice and straightforward. Now, so we can look at my Nomad environment, right? Just to make sure there's no smoke and mirrors here. We look at the jobs, right? I have a Nomad Postgres server configured. The server is integrated into Vault. There is a database engine point towards that server. When I probe or I read a secret from that database engine, it's going to go and put that into the user's table inside uh, MySQL. And I have some other agents running for my own purposes. So we want to look at the job file. Now I open up VS Code. Now I can go to my web app, right? And we can see the same thing I showed in my pictures here. There's no smoke and mirrors in my demos. These are all live, so if it breaks, it's going to be egg on my face, right? So you can see here, I've got my job. I define it. I say I want one of these particular web servers. I want the Vault access. When I talk to Vault, the policy you're allowed to have is access tables. Now, if you remember back to my presentation, access tables gave me the ability to read from the access DB engine, which means it's going to generate, I'm allowed to access that engine with read permissions. If I try to write to it, it's not going to work. Um, I'm going to pull down a certain container from the HashiCorp repository. And I'm going to show that when I mount this, I'm going to put uh, this file in as config secrets, config.json. And here's my render, right? So as you can see here, there's nothing that's sensitive in this file. So if I saw this file on GitHub, if it's in a public registry, there's no concern that I'm exposing sensitive secrets because I'm bringing them out of my pipeline and bringing them out of my code into a centralized workflow that involves a vault. So what happens here is if I go and run my environment, and I just, there's a few zoom overlays here that I'm just trying to duck my head around, which I know you can't see. So look, if I go, I want to look at my environment. Let's look, look at my environment, go Nomad, ACL, Policy, Info, Production Operations, right? I can see here, I have a very, very permissive production policy, right? And if I was to do the manual approach, I can do token create, uh, name is Berkey uh, snapshot, Berkey snap, right? And I'm going to use policy equals prod ops, uh, and the type is client, right? And the word create actually helps, doesn't it? Right, you can see here I've created that. Right, and that's a manual approach. That was what we discussed initially. Now that works really well because you've got a secure environment. Only the right people can access. Nomad can access this, so it's a great start. But it's still involved in different systems, and we're all about streamlining and having consistency. Right. So what we want to do is to actually go and do this from a centralized way. So if I want to access Vault. CLI, API, UI, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to use the CLI for consistency in my demo here. I'll do, I'll do vault read the Nomad engine, credential mount, and then the role name we made before, right? You can see here, vault has generated me some credentials. It returns me a lease of a couple of hundred hours, right? I have, it's, I'm able to renew it and I can retrieve it. So what I'm going to do is I want to prove against Nomad this has been programmed. So I'm going to take the accessor ID. I'm going to do Nomad. Ooh, capitals Berkey, Nomad ACL token info and pass it along. And you can see here that Nomad's reconciled the token that Vault just made for me. Vault's gone. Nomad, here's the here's a new token. Make this awesome. I can see here a couple of things that are really useful. Here's the name of the token, right? Here's the type of client. Is it global across my federated sites? No, because I only got one site in my in my environment. But what you see here, I've got policies from a nomad assigned to this token. So that control, those verbs and capabilities are now assigned. So I log into Vault with my Active Directory credentials. I get access to specific engines. I generate certain um, permissions and I can now access and schedule workloads to Nomad. Super, right? 
So this is the sort of flow that you have. It. And, and then if you, Pete was to do this, because Pete's uh, in marketing, his different permissions structure altogether, he doesn't get, he can't even read stuff. He can't submit jobs, right? I'm picking on Pete because he's on mute, right? But that's an example of how you can do lines of responsibility with this very, very easily. So let's submit a job. We spoke before here uh, with job run. I have my web app, right? I want to pull that web app and run that in the environment. So I can see that I deploy that job, it runs. Now, if I do uh, nomad alloc status, right? And look at it, I can see it's run. I can see that this environment is triggered off nicely and it's going. For those who are partial to a UI, you can see here that my Nomad job is running. You can see now Nomad Vault demo is running. It has been active deployment. It's happy. It's all there. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so we discussed about getting credentials. The end result is this should just work, right? And a web page should start up and I should have a connection. So if I click on my workload here, I click on this, I'm going to have page 404 not found because the default URI is actually names, right? Cool. I have a connection. Now, what Berkey spoke about was the ability for something to read from the database with permissions, with the right credentials. So let's go and prove that actually Berkey's not waffling on. And this is actually a real thing. So I'm going to take the allocation ID and we're nomad alloc uh, exec dash I dash T allocation ID. And then I'm going to X the entry point is going to be the shell, right? I'm in the container. This is the allocation of uh, prescribed nomad. It's running. You can see it on the right left hand side of my screen here. So if I hop up one directory, I can see there's a file structure. If I jump into the secrets folder, I can see the config.json file that I spoke to you before in my job manifest being rendered out. So I have this side by side for clarity. You can see here my secrets.config.json is there. And if I look here, I've got my config.json file. And if I cat the config, right, lo and behold, I have a dynamically rendered secret from Vault. Now, this serves as one, th well, there's a couple of things. One, streamlined security workflows. Two, if I reschedule this container, if I have one, five, 10, a thousand being the web front end to my important database application or something like that, right? Each of them has unique secret. Each of them will be done on demand. If you tune down from 768 hours down to 30 minutes, 50 minutes, as they expire, they rotate automatically, right? Nomad will the uh, will drain the allocation, spin it up elsewhere. So you always have a moving target as far as security is concerned. This doesn't have to be the admin's problem. This doesn't have to be the developer's problem because Nomad and Vault are working in concert to do really heavy lifting in a very streamlined fashion, which means from a security perspective, you can you know, order the policy, look at the rules, done. You don't have to worry about enforcement because we're enforcing. If you if you can't get a valid token, if you schedule it with the wrong um, policies, you can't get access, right? Because the submitter has to have permission to access the relevant policies. So you can see there, and that results in a very happy Berkey because my application works. I can find the secrets of Bruce Wayne and maybe identify him as Batman one day. But you got to get the gist, right? And, and the really cool thing about... Uh, the consistency in workflows and the consistency of this is that you as an administrator or an SRE or an infrastructure admin don't have to worry about impeding your developer saying, you do security, do it better, don't use static credentials because you're letting them, he, she, they develop what they need to develop and just augment their workflows a touch, right? You're not, not constraining them. It's very straightforward to consume. Policy, you can enforce the policy you know, of identity and role-based access control on those tokens, which get used by CICD pipelines, individual users or operators. And it's enabling self-service. So you can say, I can request that myself. And I know that by default, I'm getting the correct role. So I don't need to worry about it, right? Because there are people in your business and enterprise who don't need to know they're a part of Nomad Group 4 or you know, read operators. It just should happen by default. And the flexibility here is great. So that standardizing that workflow, keeping it consistent and making it streamlined are some of the great takeaways of Nomad's integration with Vault. Vault provides that for many other workflows on its own, independent of Nomad, but you, you get the idea. Um, so with that, I'm Berkey. Um, check out the HashiTalks coming up in Sydney. I'm in Australia-based. Um, if you want more information, 
you've got my Twitter handle there. You've got my email address. I'm pretty responsive and pretty friendly. But other than that, I thank you for your time and I'm back to you, Pete. Thanks for that, Berkey. Very nice work. Um, and I'm glad folks like Mark in marketing like me don't have access, um, only have read access, mate. It would be dangerous otherwise. Now, I'm just looking to see if there's any questions in the Q&A tab. I can't see that there are any, but if you do have any, feel free to drop them in now and we'll get to them. Otherwise, as Berkey said, um, you'll have all these contact details in, in the follow-up email and the recording of this, of this um, session. So do reach out. Um, and if you like what you heard and want to learn more about Nomad, um, I encourage you to visit our Learn pages. Um, uh, Berkey might have mentioned learn.hashicorp.com. There's lots of great stuff to follow up there as well. So thanks again for joining us. A big thank you, Berkey, for your entertaining presentation and demo there, always. Um, but yeah, thanks again, folks, to everyone who joined and stayed on the call. Um, looking forward to seeing you on a future uh, snapshot. Um, until then, enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now.